I came from a family of sewers on my mother's side. And fashion design was a form of expression and something that happened because I was poor. So I started, to my mother's dismay, cutting up clothes and sewing them back together. And when I got into my 20s, I went to Pima and immediately started doing fashion shows and eventually was well known enough to start a fashion week here in Tucson. And my business grew mostly online, but I got tired of sewing the same dress like a hundred times. So I spent a couple years figuring out what I wanted to do. By that time I was in my thirties and I went back to work in school systems. All the time I was making visual art, like 2D art, but I wasn't really thinking about it as a practice until I got to art school at the U of A. I think everybody creative has this kind of intuition and thread of understanding materials and objects and are in deep relationships with them. And so mine is these like discarded, vintage, sometimes broken things that I can then collage together in a piece to tell a story. I am probably attracted to specific pieces, like specific types of it. I love porcelain, <laughs> and like, um, but I also love like rusted tools and things like that. So I collect them and they always eventually tell me what piece they belong in. I'm working with hidden histories. I'm working with discarded peoples and cultures. And these objects all at once represent the past and present to me. These pictures, these men are like in everything. Three planters after 1845 is what it's called. Don't they just look like plantation owners? <laughs> like the what you would expect them to look like. I also collect what in the cave the artist calls relics. And these are sometimes listed kindly as African American Americana, but they really are racist, sad, decorative items. And oddly enough, when I find them, I'm not sad about them. I just know that they have a story to tell that is alternative to what has been given to them. One of the reasons why I chose to do residency at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago for my MFA was because of the faculty and because of the diversity. As a black artist who's doing work, I need another black artist to be like, yeah, that's awesome, or you're missing the mark there, you know? And I'm also somebody who, didn't necessarily grow up within a culture, right? One, because I was in Tucson, and two, because I was raised by my maternal family. And so you need that companionship, you need that support, you need that critical eye. Everybody needs that to grow as an artist. And that's really important. And I wish we, in general, had more spaces like that in Tucson. You know, we can open an art news or even a juxtapose and be like, oh, women and people of color are having a moment in the art world, but the statistics and the numbers tell us differently, right? We're not being acquired by institutions or collectors. Things have not changed that much. I think the most special part of Snakebite is um, Rachel and Geneva. <laughs> They're really approaching it in this very like contemporary fashion. They are an example of people who are trying to create those spaces. They have had a lot of people of color show there, and they've also had a lot of women show there. I feel like we balance each other in such a great way that it's... We, I agree. Yeah, we yeah. cover all the, I like to say, scholar and street. That's <laughs> if we had a show. I have to be the scholar. Welcome. Before we begin, there are a few things we would like you to know. Geneva and I do performance together and we had been looking for a studio space. As an artist and also as a consumer, 
the relationship begins where you're making work centered around the monetization of it. It gets hard. You aren't allowed to fail and you're not allowed to try new things. And it feels so great to be able to give space to artists that I just particularly like. For me, it feels defiant. We've had the opportunity to travel and to see like residencies and performance mm -hmm. festivals, different ways and models to create this type of space. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't really in Tucson. It really feels like providing a little um, stepping stone for practice that is where we both want to mm -hmm. go and where we love seeing people arrive. I saw Liz's work and I was like, who is this person and why haven't I not seen her work in Tucson before? And I reached out to her and we went into a studio visit and it was on. When they asked me to do an installation, and then I realized it's a really huge opportunity to test out my thesis. When I started working strictly in 3D, I was moving on instinct a lot. And I was creating a piece, the first of its kind for me, about the antebellum South. I grew up with the white half of my family. I don't know the black half. And so in an attempt to understand my ancestry, I started doing research because like many people in the diaspora, we just, you, you hit a dead end. Everything started to merge as I learned about these systems that we've created since the beginning of our country and how they have evolved and we're still living under them and we don't always know that we are. And so that is the concept of you've made this house your home. This idea of house being a metaphor to these systems that we live in and that, you know, maybe the house is passed down generationally and you're not aware of the different societal constructs that are actually bad bones. It's only recently that we started really thinking about patriarchal structures and we're now calling attention to our words and our thoughts and these things that were taught to us over time. And part of it is also a call to communities of color, my community, saying let's examine what's going on within this umbrella of white supremacy, these concepts of class and respectability politics and where those came from. That heritage is really important and to change that, it's like that therapist saying, it ran in my family till it ran into me, you know, but that's not gonna happen until we take a good look at those systems that we might have been engaging in that we didn't know about or maybe some hard histories of our family.